Welcome to the video for chapter 27 of the Cambridge Introduction to Sanskrit, which is going to tell you about the perfect tense. Broadly speaking, there are two things that we need to know about the perfect tense. First of all, what it means, and secondly, how it's formed. Its meaning in classical Sanskrit is identical to that of the imperfect. There originally was a difference that hasn't been upheld. Now we just have two different sets of forms that have the same function, namely they refer to the past. As far as the formation of the perfect is concerned, we have three elements. First, a so-called reduplicative syllable. Second, the verbal root in either strong or weak form. And thirdly, a special perfect ending. A and B together, so the reduplicative syllable and the verbal root, form the perfect stem. And that means that the perfect stem is unrelated to the present tense stem. And that means that there are no 10 different classes of perfect formations, but just the one that we need to learn for all Sanskrit verbal roots. So let's look at the three elements that make up a perfect verb form. First of all, there is the reduplicative syllable, which consists of the first consonant and the first vowel of the zero grade of a verbal root. So, for example, from wish to enter, we take the first consonant, w, and the first vowel, e. We combine these to we, and that gives us the reduplicative syllable of wish. There are some irregularities in this process in a number of verbs, and those will be discussed in a little while. But basically what we're looking at is almost the same as what we were introduced to in the reduplication of class 3 verbs in chapter 18. Secondly, there is the verbal root, which is strong, i.e. with its vowel standing in guna, in the active singular. So for example, from wish, we would get wish and which is weak, i.e. with its vowel in zero grade in all other forms. So wish simply remains as wish. Note that again, this is the same pattern that we found in athematic verbs, which were introduced in chapter 18, where we had a strong stem in the active singular and a weak stem everywhere else. In between the root and the ending, we sometimes have an e appearing, and that is the case if a root ends in a consonant, and the ending also begins with a consonant. That then leads us to the third main element of perfect forms, namely the endings. The endings are unique to the perfect, and so we don't know them yet, and they need to be memorized. But when we will get to see them in a second, we can note that there are some similarities to the endings that we already do know. And that is that in the first dual, we have a w appearing, whereas in the first plural, there is a m appearing. And again, there will be a great formal similarity between the second and third dual endings. And here you have the paradigms, i.e. the full sets of forms of wish to enter in the perfect active and in the perfect middle. Now you can see that there is some color coding going on. The orange bits at the beginning are the reduplicative syllable. The blue that follows is the verbal root, either in guna or in zero grade. Then the green bit at the end is, unsurprisingly, the ending. And in the case of some forms, we find an e appearing before the ending, and that's the e that was just mentioned, which appears after roots that end in a consonant and before endings that begin with a consonant. So in the active singular, we get we wisha, we weshita, we wisha. So note we have the reduplicative syllable, we have the verbal root in guna, so wish. Then we have the endings a, ta, and a. And in front of ta, which begins with a consonant, this e appears. So it's we wish ta rather than we wish ta, which would cause some internal sandhi. And then in the dual and plural, we have our verbal root not in guna but in zero grade, so it's wish. And we get we wish wa, we wish atuch, we wish atuch, we wish ima, we wish a, we wish uch. So as you can see, we have a new set of endings here a, ta, a, wa, Atuch, atuch, ma, a, uch, 
and the set of endings we need to memorize. Then in the middle, we have the weak stem throughout, the weak stem consisting of the reduplicative syllable and the verbal root in zero grade. And as before, the middle has endings that are separate from those of the active. So we have we wish she, we wish she, we wish she, we wish she we wish she, we wish she, we wish she, we wish she, we wish and we wish she. Again, new endings that we will have to memorize. And again, in front of endings that begin with a consonant and in this case, after a root that ends in a consonant, we have this vowel E appearing. Just in case that was all a bit too much to take in in one go, here's another analysis of two perfect forms, namely of the second singular perfect active and of the first and third singular perfect middle. First of all, the second singular perfect active has the reduplicative syllable wi, then the root in gunna, wish, then the vowel e that appears between consonants, i.e. the consonant at the end of a root and the consonant at the beginning of the ending. And then we have our ending ta. This gives us we, we, she, ta as the second singular perfect active form. Then we have we, we, she, which is the form for the first and third singular perfect middle. We have we, the reduplicative syllable, wish, the root in zero grade, because that's what we find throughout the middle, and then our ending e. Notice that the ending for the first and singular and third singular is identical in the middle and also in the active. In the middle, the ending for first and third singular is e, and in the active, the ending for first and third singular is a. As was mentioned earlier, the formation of the reduplicative syllable isn't always straightforward, and that's because there are various conditions under which root initial consonants do not reduplicate identically. Those conditions are the same that we also found in class 3 verbs introduced in chapter 18, but still let's just go over them once more. First of all, aspirated consonants reduplicate without aspiration. So, for example, from buj to enjoy, we get the first singular perfect active bu bhoj a. So we here have bu, the reduplicative syllable, which consists of the unaspirated equivalent of b. So instead of b, we get b. Then the vowel u is reduplicated. This is then added before the verbal root in guna, because we here have a singular active form. So we don't get buj, but we get bhoj. And then we get the ending for the first perfect active, which is, uh, sorry, the first singular perfect active, which is an a, and so we get bu bhoja. Secondly, velar consonants reduplicate as palatals. So, for example, from ker to make to do, we reduplicate the k, but k is a velar consonant, and so it reduplicates as its palatal equivalent, which is ch. And so we get ch kar a. Ch is the reduplicated form of k. Then the vowel a in the reduplicative syllable ch we are going to come to in a second. Then we have kar, which is the um, verbal root kur, but in guna. And then we again have a, our ending for the first singular perfect active. And so we have ch kara. H, which often originated as g reduplicates as j, because g is an aspirated sound, aspirates reduplicate without their aspiration, so g would reduplicate as g, but g is a velar, and velar reduplicate as palatals, and so g would reduplicate as j. And so, for example, from has to laugh, we get the first singular perfect active form ja hasa, which consists of the reduplicative syllable ja, then the root in guna, has, and our first singular perfect active ending, a, ja hasa. Then finally, again, as in class three verbs, in initial consonant clusters, so when we have more than one consonant at the beginning of a root, it's only the first consonant that is reduplicated. So for example, of chip to throw, we have a k 
and a sh at the beginning of the root, but it's only the k that gets reduplicated. K is a velar. Velars get reduplicated as palatals, and so k is reduplicated as ch, and so we get a first singular chi, kshi, pa, where chi is the reduplicative syllable, kship is our root in guna, and a again is the ending for the first singular perfect active. The exception to this rule concerning initial consonant clusters is if the cluster consists of s plus a stop. In that case, it is the stop that reduplicates. So, for example, of sta to stand, we have in the perfect the strong stem ta sta. So we find the t reduplicating, but without its aspiration. So not as t, but as t. And we find that added before the before the root. So the strong stem in the perfect would be ta sta. Or similarly of stu to praise, we find the strong stem in the perfect tu sto. What's happening here is that in stu the s is not reduplicated, but the t is. So the reduplicative syllable is t plus the zero grade vowel u, so tu. Then in the singular, where we have the strong stem, the root takes the guna sto. And when we combine tu and sto, then the s at the beginning of sto retroflects into sh because of the rookie rule, because it's now preceded by u. As a result of that, the t, the dental t, also re um, becomes retroflex. And so we have tu sto as the strong stem of the perfect of stu. So reduplicating consonants works exactly like what we already know from class three presents. However, vowels in perfect reduplicative syllables reduplicate slightly differently. And the roots here in the perfect, sorry, the rules here in the perfect are as follows. Roots that contain an e or e or an u or u reduplicate these vowels as their short form. So short e or long e reduplicate as short e. Short u or long u reduplicate as short u. So for example, of buj, we get the weak perfect stem bu buj. Of kship, we get chi kship. In all other cases, i.e. if um, a root contains any vowel other than e, e or u, u, the reduplicative vowel is a. So, for example, of ker, as we also saw a minute ago, the reduplicative syllable is cha, so we get the stem cha ker. And of da, the reduplicative syllable would be da, and so we would get the stem da da. In perfect forms, we also find some internal sandhi, and this mostly concerns root final vowels, which will change into their semivowel equivalent if they are followed by an ending that begins with a vowel. So, for example, verbs whose root ends in u or u add a w before endings that begin with a vowel. So, for example, of shru to here, we have a third plural active form shu, shru, wuch. Shu is the reduplicative syllable, shru is the root in zero grade, uch is the ending, w is what is added in between the root and the ending to keep both of them distinct. Shu, shru, wuch. Of stu, we find the third singular middle form, tu, stu, we. What we have here is tu, the reduplicative syllable, stu, the root in zero grade, where we get a change from stu to stu due to rookie, and e the ending, and in between the root and the ending we find we sorry we find w added, and so this keeps the root and the ending both um, properly recognizable. So tu stu we. Then verbs whose root ends in short e or long e may either do the same thing, i.e. they may add a y, the semivowel equivalent of e or e, or the e or e may change into a y itself. So for example, of ni, we have the third person plural active form, ninjuch, which consists of ni, which is the reduplicative syllable, ni, which is the root in zero grade, 
and uch, which is the third plural active ending. And in front of this uch, the ni, or rather the e at the end of ni, has changed into its semi-vowel equivalent, ye, and so we have nin yuch. An alternative form to this would be ni ni yuch. Finally, root final vocalic r changes into consonantal r, and so, for example, of kr, we have the third person plural active form cha kruch, where cha is the reduplicative syllable, kr is the root in zero grade. Note that the vocalic r has been replaced by a regular consonantal r, because what follows is an ending, uch, that begins with a vowel, and in front of this vowel, vocalic r changes into consonantal r. So now you have seen how to form perfect verb forms in Sanskrit. What you should do now in order to make that knowledge stick is probably brush up on how reduplication works. Remind yourself of um, which sounds do not reduplicate identically. And secondly, you need to memorize this new set of perfect endings, starting with the active. Don't try to do both sets at once. That's probably a bit much. Do the first set today and the second set later today or tomorrow or whatever works best for you. That was it for this chapter. We hope that you found this video helpful and if you have any comments or suggestions we would love to hear from you. Please do write to us at ruppel at cambridge-sanskrit.org. And now for your own work on this material, good luck and have fun!